Hi friends, today we are going to make orange almond cake and these are the ingredients right in front of your eyes. You can also find the list on the description of this video. So we'll start with melted butter and sugar. Um, so let's mix these two together, melted butter and sugar and beat it a little bit. So we took three fourth cup of sugar and half cup of melted butter. So I took a little less than three fourth cup of sugar because I like my cake a little less sweet, more uh, bready feel, but not really bread feel, but it's a little less sweet and we're going to add orange juice to it. So you can decide on your sugar. You can put from half to three fourth cup. If you want sweet, sweet cake, three fourth is great. But if you want a little less, then I kind of put like, I would say three fifth, if that makes sense. <laughs> So now this is our um, beaten up sugar and melted butter. To this we add 1 fourth cup of heavy whipping cream and you know we can start adding our flour and um, orange juice which is half cup of orange juice slowly as we are moving along so i'm going to add my orange juice first and then i'm going to take a little bit of flour and keep adding it slowly it smells great because of the fresh orange juice in here so we're going to slowly add our flour mix it together and anytime you feel your consistency is too thick you can add a little bit of milk to make it more of a flowy consistency. So that's uh, now we added our flour, but I can see that it's making a dough. So I'm going to add half cup of milk to it to kind of make it flowy. And after that, we can add all our other dry ingredients. So now we are going to add oranges. It's around one and a half tablespoon of orange zest. It just gives a great flavor to the orange cake. Besides the orange juice, the zest gives a nice jing. So how much ever you like, if you don't want too much of it, one tablespoon is fine. Uh, my family does like that, um, a little bite on the zest. So I put one tablespoon and this is the consistency we want. This looks awesome. Anytime you feel this is the consistency is too thick, you can add some more milk to it. So next we add vanilla essence, um, one, one and a half tablespoon would be perfect. It just gives a nice flavor to the flour. And then you add one teaspoon of baking powder, half teaspoon of baking soda. After this, you mix it up and also you add one tablespoon of vinegar, white vinegar or distilled vinegar, whichever you have at home. And after this, you just kind of uh, with a spatula roll, uh, rotate it, mix it up, but not too much. You don't want any of the sodas to settle too much in, otherwise it won't fluff up. So we'll give it a twist for a minute and then we are ready to put it in our pans. Okay, now we are going to put our batter, which is right here in the pans. So I typically like to do multiple small cakes so I could have give it to my friends families and also it just is looks cuter when i bake them but you can do it in one eight by eight pan or whatever you have at home so um i'll do it in one four by four and then two two by twos so you put some oil all across dust some um flour in it and then just take the pan and dust it all over. The other way to do is to put parchment paper. 
I, I just like the more traditional way. Once you have your pans ready, you pour in some almonds in here as your base. And then you kind of put your batter in halfway through and you're all set. So my oven is currently preheating at 350 degrees. I'm going to bake these at 300 degrees, but each oven is different. So just kind of figure out your measurements. Once we've uh, poured in our batter, just uh, push it down so that you get a more flatter cake in terms of there's not a peak forming in the middle. So this would remove all the extra air out of the batter. There you can see a little tiny bit of holes showing up right here. Once you feel they're leveled, it's good to go in the oven after preheating. So you can garnish your almonds at the bottom or on the top of the cake. So for one of them I did at the bottom, the other two I did on the top. So either way is fine. Just don't put it in your batter, otherwise it becomes a little dense and not spongy. So our cakes are ready now. We are just going to slightly with a butter knife scratch it out and it should easily plop into your plate. So here you go. Your almond orange cake is ready. And let's take a small piece here and check it out. It's ready to be eaten. <laughs>